Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about vectors. Vectors are similar to arrays and just like arrays, they use contiguous storage locations for their elements. But unlike arrays, their size can change dynamically with their storage being handled automatically by the container. That is, once we have made a vector, in the program we can dynamically change its size, which means we can add elements as well as delete elements from our vector which is not possible with arrays. Now let's see how we can declare a vector. First of all, to work with vectors, we have to include the header file vector and we will use the standard library namespace of C++. Now we can declare a vector by following this format. That is, we write vector and within the less than and greater than sign, we write the type of vector we want to create. Then we write the name of our vector and within round braces, we specify the number of elements that our vector will contain and we can also specify its initial value. So let's take an example to understand it better. So here we have declared a vector and we have defined the type as int that is it will contain integer values and the name of our vector is a and within the round braces, we are saying that our vector will contain four elements and we have initialized all the four elements to zero. Therefore, our vector will look something like this, which is similar to an array containing four elements. Now, if you want to make a vector which would contain character elements, we can simply change the type with char. Like in this case, we have created a vector b and we have defined number of elements as three and initial value as c. So our vector would look something like this. Now let's take our vector a and see how we can input values in our vector and we can do this in the similar way we do with arrays that is if you want to insert four elements we will start our for loop with i is equal to zero and i less than four and we can simply see in ai that is if our first input is one then the value at index zero would be one and if our second input is two the value at index one would become two and similarly, for every input, the corresponding value would change. Now let's look at some inbuilt functions that we would require when we are working with vectors. The first function is pushback, which takes an element as an argument and adds it to the end of the vector. And the second function is popback, which removes one element from the end of the vector. That is, suppose if we have this vector A, with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you want to add element 5 at its end, then we can simply write a dot push back 5, which would add element 5 at the end of our vector. And similarly, if you want to delete this element 5 from the end of our vector, we can simply write a dot pop back and it would delete the last element from our vector, which is 5. Thus, by using these functions push back and pop back, we can dynamically add and delete elements from our vector, which is not possible in case of arrays. Now, one thing to note here is, if we have not initialized our vector with number of elements, we will use pushback function to insert values in it, and we cannot directly input the values in the vector using cin, because we have not specified the number of elements, thus no memory is allocated to the vector, so this might be the case when we want to take the number of elements from the user, then we could simply declare our vector b and we will take the number of elements from the user, say that is n. And now we can loop from 0 to n minus 1. And what we will do is we will input the value in a temporary variable 10 and we can push back this variable into our vector b for every input. So in this way, we are dynamically adding elements to our vector for every input. Now let's look at some more functions. The begin function returns an iterator pointing to the first element in the vector. And the end function returns an iterator pointing to the last element in the vector. And we can use these functions in many ways to access elements in our vector at different positions. One basic use would be that we can traverse our vector of any size using these functions. That is, suppose this is the vector a given to us with four elements. 
then we can easily traverse this vector by declaring an iterator it of a vector of type int and using our for loop we can traverse the vector by equating it to a dot begin which would point it to the first element in our vector and we would traverse until it is not equal to a dot int that is when we will reach the end of our vector we will stop and until we reach the end we will keep on increasing our iterator and by using this iterator it we can easily print values of every element by using the star operator to dereference the value at the location so our output would be 1 2 3 and 4 now another very useful function is the size function which returns the size of the vector that is suppose this is the vector a given to us with four elements so now if we print its size using the size function it would give us the value 4 and now if we add one more element to this vector suppose we add element 7 using the pushback function at the end of the vector so now our vector contains five elements and now if we will print its size using the size function it would give us the size as 5 that is even if we add or delete elements from our vector dynamically the size function will return the number of elements the vector is currently having now if we want to insert and remove elements from anywhere in the vector we can use the insert function to insert value at any position in the vector and we can use the erase function to delete the value at any position in the vector so let's take an example to understand how these functions work. Suppose this is the vector a given to us. Let's say we have to insert element 8 at index 2. So we will use the insert function and we will write a dot insert a dot begin plus 2 comma 8 wherein the first argument specifies the position where we have to insert the element which in our case is the second position from the beginning. Thus we are using the begin function which would refer to the index 0 and by adding 2 we will reach the index 2 and then at that index we are inserting the value 8. So now our vector a would look something like this where 8 is at index 2 and the rest of the elements have shifted one index to the right that is 3 is now at index 3 similarly 4 is at index 4 and 7 has moved to index 5. Suppose now we wish to delete the element 3 which is at index 3. So we can simply write a dot erase a dot begin plus 3 where a dot begin plus 3 specifies the position of the element to be deleted which is third from the beginning of our vector. Hence our vector will now look something like this where we have deleted the element 3 from our vector and now as we can observe element 4 and element 7 have shifted one index to the left that is 4 is now at index 3 and 7 is now at index 4. We can also use insert and erase functions to insert and delete multiple values from our vector but I would not go into that much detail in this video. Another very useful thing about vectors is we can easily sort them using the inbuilt sort function in C++ that is suppose this is the vector given to us and we need to sort the elements in ascending order we can simply do this by using the sort function and within the round braces we provide the range of elements that we need to sort which for the whole vector is from the beginning till the end so we use the begin and end function to provide the range and this would give us a vector which will have sorted elements this was all for this video. Thank you for watching.